As we would always say, we can never lock down the gospel. Anybody who's listening to this message, I know it's not an accident you're listening to this. I want you to put this in your soul and in your heart. Jesus is our ultimate hope. Welcome to our online Victory Makati worship service. I hope you guys are excited in worshiping together. So please, please, please tell to your friends, your family that we will worship together. And we are still here in this pandemic. More than a year and a lot of changes happened and is still changing. But the comfort that we have is that no matter the changes... We know that Jesus will never change. Just like in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, thank you that even in the midst of the changes, the changes externally and even internally, Lord, we can draw our comfort, our confidence, knowing that you are God who never changes. Your love never changes. Your affirmation never changes. That's why it just gives us the excitement knowing that we can worship you. We have a big God who never changes. So thank you, Lord. We will just worship you with our all because you are an unchanging God. We worship you, Lord. Good morning, church. Let's worship God for He is faithful, unfailing, and unchanging.
That you will carry us through Seasons will change The sun and moon will fade away But our hope is sure That forever you reign Let it be as you have said Take it.
as we have been singing that song, we will follow you. But at times when we follow God, it's really not like the whole staircase He's revealing to us and we will compute and analyze, Lord, okay, that's good for me, then I will follow you. But there are times it's just God saying, my son, my daughter, just follow me. Trust me. Sometimes in things that we do not understand or logically it doesn't make sense. But the comfort that we can get, even if things don't make sense, as we try to follow God in His Word, in His will, in Isaiah 55, verses 8 to 9, it says, this is Isaiah saying to the people of Israel, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Israelites, during the time they were exiles, and (laughs) the things that were happening, they have been judged because of their sin. But in that chapter, you see the compassion of God also assuring to them that even if things are not making sense, the Lord is saying, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And that's the same thing that's happening with us. There are times where, Lord, I don't understand. But I can trust you. Knowing if I don't completely understand, knowing that you are a good God, knowing that you are a loving God, you want the best for me. I might not understand everything, but I choose to trust you because your ways are higher. Even if I am the most smart person in the world, I cannot comprehend your great, great, great plan for me. That's why even if we feel like things are just crumbling, things are not making sense, we can just go back to God in His Word and say, Lord, even if I don't understand this, I will choose to trust You and I choose to worship You. Lord, in the midst of everything, we choose to trust You. In the midst of everything, we choose to follow You. And Lord, we know We don't need to understand everything, but we can trust you because you are a God who is unchanging, who knows way, way, way better than us. So thank you, Lord. This just gives us comfort knowing that you are there for us no matter what. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome again to our online victory Makati service wherever you are in the Philippines or in the world or you are tuning in in our victory Makati FB live or YouTube I'm excited for you because we are worshiping God together and speaking of together it's not just about just worshiping God together but we have also opportunities where we can build together specifically this coming June we will build together because June 12, alam naman natin, it's our Independence Day. And we have an online treat for you, an online event as one church. So we have this event called Tayo. Okay, so if you are in your FB chat or YouTube, chat in there, Tayo. Okay, Tayo. So I hope you can join, especially to the young people because this Tayo is an online event where it's about conversations about nation building. So this is going to be led by Pastor Joe from our uh, Santa Rosa Church. But since we are one church, you are all invited. So if you are part of our church community, you are invited to this. We are excited for you. And we will also know here that nation building is really part of an expression of God's image. It's part of who we are, building our nation. And we will also find ways how we can participate and serve our community. So for more details of that, please visit our social media accounts. So that's amazing where we can build together, but also at the same time, we can worship God together through giving. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, 
it says, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. We all know that whatever we have, whatever we can do, whatever resources we have, it came from God. So we know that our resources, it's not just Him empowering us, but also He will give us the grace to also to give, to give back with a cheerful heart. So when we do this, we know when we give to God, when we give back to Him, when we give our resources to others, when we serve, when we help, we know it's also putting a smile on God's face, knowing we are doing it cheerfully. Lord, thank you for this ability that we have the potential, the opportunity to give. Because Lord, we know that whatever we have, it came from, it came from you. And thank you, Lord, that you are also allowing our hearts to be like you, that when we give, it's cheerfully. Because knowing that when we give, it's honoring you. Thank the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. So if this is your first time in joining us in Victory, whether you're just tagged by your friends or you just saw this link uh, in your feed, no one's obliged to give. But if you want to give, God bless you. And if you want to learn how to give, you can visit our website, victory.org.ph slash give for more instructions. God bless you as you give. And as we are worshiping God together in our giving, let's now take this time to worship God through the hearing of God's word. Miss Mariam? Thank you, Pastor Neil. Ayan, thank you so much. Woo! Yes! Feeling nyo ba ang daming tao on site? Wala pa. Okay, feeling nyo lang yan kasi super supportive ng mga team na nandito. Really shout out to our worship services team uh, led by Avi and our uh, music ministry led by Jet. No? Super thank you for uh, being here and serving. Si Pastor King, anniversary niya. So happy anniversary, Pastor King and Nika. Okay, enjoy your break today. Uh, speaking of break, we are actually going on a series break. Ayan, we just came from a wonderful, wonderful series of Trustworthy where we explored the book of Isaiah and really just uh, established the character of God. So today, medyo break tayo as I was praying what to preach on. It's really something very basic, something very close to my heart. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mariam Gonzalez. I actually serve as a part of the ministry staff here in Victory Mahati. And for those of you who do know me, you know that I have an adorable teacup Pomeranian named Pom Poms. Okay, so ayan siya sa picture kung nakikita nyo. This was taken 2017. It was the very first time we got her and she was in that corner for three days in that mat. Hindi siya lumalapit sa amin, hindi kumakain, umiinom ng tubig, pero hindi talaga siya lumalapit sa amin. It's like there was just that sense because she was rehomed. So there's just that sense of unfamiliarity. And I remember there was one time when I took her out on a walk when it was very early on. Uh, yun nga, mga 2017, no, when we got her. Took her to a walk, so naka-leash siya, ganyan. <laughs> Tapos, for some reason, nabitawan ko yung leash. And grabe. Okay, the first thing she did was run as far away she, as she can from me. So, habol naman ako, di ba? So, I was running and I, I kept on giving her commands, pom-poms! No! Stop! Pom-poms! Lahat na. Dead ma. Okay, hindi talaga ako pinapansin ni Pom-Pom. Stockbo lang siya. Praise God for a bystander who saw the commotion and just stepped on her leash and was able to stop her and was able to get her. And that whole time, you know, I was sweating, I was palpitating, and I was telling her, Grabe ka, eh kung may nangyari sa'yo, you know. So, it was really the feeling of... Why? Why would you run away? Don't you understand how dangerous it is? And as I was preparing for this preaching, that was the illustration that came to mind. You know, I remember when, before I even had a personal relationship with Jesus, I really viewed the Word of God or the Bible as sort of like a leash. You know, yung parang feeling ko, it was, uh, it was about being controlled. And even before I had that personal relationship with God, I would 
like pom-poms, spent most of my life running away from God and thinking, no, you know, my freedom is not here. My freedom is there. I want to go as far away from the law, far away from the commands, and I just want to live my life free. And that definition of freedom was really, I thought that the time was found in the freedom that the world had to offer me. So today, I decided to really talk about something that uh, meant something to me, talk about something that I learned, a spiritual discipline. Like what I said, it's super basic because we're really going to talk about the Word of God. And I'll be reading from the book of James. And a bit of a background, uh, the book of James was written by James, okay? But James had a very unique relationship with Jesus. I say unique because James is actually the half-brother of Jesus. Opo, meron pong mga kapatid si Jesus, okay? So he was actually the son of Mary and Joseph, and he was the half-brother of Jesus. So imagine growing up in a home where Jesus is your brother. Wala namang ka-pressure-pressure, di ba? Si Jesus lang naman yan, okay? But imagine, can you imagine the sibling rivalry? You know, I was thinking about this, and wow, grabe. If there's anyone who had any right to leverage on that relationship that he had with Jesus, si James yon talaga. You know how we leverage on relationship and we say, ay, grabe yung sikat na tiktokerist. Pastor namin yan, alam mo yan? Yung gano'n, yung parang, ay nako, yung, ano, yung magaling mag-speak, ganyan, yung motivational speaker, ay, pastor namin yan, ganyan. So maraming, may gano'n, may leveraging tayo. Ano. Minsan nga, ang layo ng relationship, eh, di ba? Huy, alam mo, yung second cousin, ng kapatid, ng pinsan, ng kapitbahay ng lola ko, ay, grabe artista. Parang, ay, ang layo na nung connection, di ba? Pero makonek lang. But why am I saying that? I'm really saying that because it was interesting how James actually uh, described himself. In verse 1 of James 1, he said, I am a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Such humility. Okay, no leveraging on the relationship. He actually just defined his relationship as an active faith and obedient service to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will see this theme running across the book of James, you know, the practicality of being a Christian and what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus. Now, James is one of the early leaders of our church. In fact, okay, the book of James was the very first book written in the New Testament. So this is just around maybe a decade or less after Jesus died resurrected, and ascended to heaven. So during this time, it was really being called a Christian was a derogatory term. You know, Christian was not popular as it was now. It is now as it was before. Lalo na, bagong-bago pa lang to, you know, almost a decade after the death of Jesus Christ. So the, the church, the followers of God, the followers of Jesus were being persecuted they were going through different trials, different testing. Uh, see, James pastored the very first church in Jerusalem, but this letter was written to those who are outside Jerusalem. It was written to the ones who were persecuted, the ones who, had, who were scattered outside Jerusalem. Some of these people he doesn't even know. But he generally addressed this book to followers of Jesus. So how many of you, you can say, ako a follower ako ni Jesus? Then this message is for you, okay? So exciting as we uh, go through that. Uh, that's why it's not surprising, no? When James actually, from verses 1 to 18, he really started off by talking about hardships, and difficulties, and trials, and testings. And then he was saying, look, as followers of Jesus, we cannot live the same way our neighbors live. Okay? He was saying, you need to change your perspective about suffering and about trials and testings that you're going through. Mga kapatid, we are not going to escape it. 
It's part of the broken world led by broken people. And how many of you know na totoo pa rin yon hanggang ngayon? That we are still in a world that is filled with brokenness. Okay? Broken people. And in fact, if we are really going to be honest to ourselves, even us who are followers of Jesus, there is a certain degree of brokenness in all of us. We have a lot of inconsistencies in our characters. There are certain things that we believe, but we're having a hard time living out. And that brokenness applies to us even now that we are in Christ. But the good news is, and this is our edge, is that our God is a God who restores. Our God is in the business of making lives whole. Kasama na tayo doon. Yun, yun yung expertise niya, kumbaga. And so, he started off by encouraging the people, guys, you know, consider it joy when you go through all these trials, through all these testings, because you know what? As you persevere, as you work hard, as you go on fulfilling the call that God has for you, you will be made whole. You will be made complete. You will be made perfect. And that definition of wholeness is really being like Christ. Okay, so we'll start with that definition of wholeness as the goal of God for all of us, which is really Christ-likeness. So talo na ako dun sa verse. Okay, so we're actually gonna be um, soaking or meditating on verses 19 to 25. And to start off, start with verse 19. Where it says here, my dear brothers and sisters, like what I said, family nga kasi yung kausap niya. Okay, he was talking to followers of Jesus. So he said, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Okay, get a pen, write it down, and mark it. Everyone, everyone should be quick to listen, slow, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now you know what I love about James, para siyang New Testament Proverbs. If you read through James, which is really a very short book, uh, you read through it, ang daming mga power lines, yung mga one-liner na boom, sakit sa heart, yung ganon. Marami siyang ganon, and I love how it really focuses on living the life that we are called to live. So, sabi niya dito, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Alam nyo, we are in an age and day where everyone wants to be heard. Lalo na ngayon, di ba? Everyone wants to be heard. Everybody has something to say. You post something, uh, whether it's controversial or not, you will hear from people you know, and from people you don't know. Minsan nga may mag- maka-comment, parang BFF kayo, pero pag nakita naman kayo sa church, hindi kayo nagpapansinan. Okay, that's the dynamic of the world that we are in. Okay, and ever since last year, ever since the pandemic, it's so understandable. It seems like everyone is on the edge. Yung edgy ka, you feel like, Things are uncertain. Things are not sure. What's gonna happen next? There's a lot of unfulfilled dreams, hopes, and plans that we made last year. None of them came to pass. There's that looming feeling of fear because now you are getting sick. Your family is getting sick. Your friends' family, your friends are, everyone's like getting sick. And some of them you've already lost to the pandemic. And there's that edginess. And you can't help but feel, I mean, I get it. I totally understand. You can't help but feel frustrated and disappointed. And this day and age, dahil nasa bahay lang tayo, our quick outlet is to post, to tweet, to vlog, in our anger, in our frustration. Sometimes there are things that we say that we regret. And I love what James said. James said, look guys, as followers of Jesus, even before you respond, even before you speak, please 
Be quicker to listen. Makinig muna tayo kay Lord. And you know, I have learned, and since, you know, this is a very practical message, I have learned that uh, there's such value in putting pause between the time that we get angry and frustrated and disappointed and the time that we respond or we write or we tweet or we post. A 10-minute pause just in between to listen to God. Just 10 minutes, Lord, this is how I feel. This is how this thing is making me feel. And Lord, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, and, and I, I want to lash out. I want to post. I want to share my anger to the world, Lord. But after listening to God, trust me, your response will be very different. Why? Because James is saying that, look, Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. That's why God doesn't want us to be controlled by our emotions, to be controlled by the fear, to be controlled by the anger, the frustration, the disappointment. Why? Because anything we do out of anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires for us and for the people who reads our posts or the people around us, or the people who watch our vlogs, you know. It does not produce, it does not accomplish the things that God wants to accomplish. You know, sometimes we attack people in our anger and frustration, and we forget that, uy, anak din yan ni Lord. Yang inaatake mo, yang, yang pinapatamaan mo sa post, yang pinapagalitan mo sa vlog mo. They were also created in the image and likeness of God. May plano rin si Lord sa buhay ng mga yan. And we need to constantly remember that if apart from the grace and the goodness of God in our lives, we're no different from these people that we are attacking. But see, that doesn't happen if you don't pause. And be quick to listen. Be quick to ask God, Lord, how do I respond? As your follower, how do I respond? James practically proceeds to saying, Therefore, get rid, get rid, oh, diba? to the point. Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. See, when the Lord speaks to us in that pause, in that 10 minutes between our anger and our posting or our reacting to how we feel, the Lord will speak to you and more, more often than not, in my experience, He will tell you, you have this sin in your heart. There's something there that is not aligned to my word. There's something there that is not aligned to my will. Get rid of it. Get rid of the... So as much as we are quick to listen to the voice of God, we should also be quick to repent. When the Lord shows us these areas of our lives that needs to be surrendered uh, in His Lordship or, you know, the grace of the Spirit to overcome whatever sin there is in our lives. And not only that, you know, James said, humbly accept the word planted in you. So I was thinking about this. Okay, so what does it mean to humbly accept the word planted in you? You know how when you plant a seed, diba, sa mga plantitos, plantitos dyan, hello, shout out sa inyo. Pero totoo, diba, pag nagplant ka ng seed, Hindi mo pwedeng galawin yon. Hindi pwedeng after two days, ano, tumubo na kaya yung seed? Ay, wala pa, hindi pa nagro-root. Sige, tanim natin ulit. After few days, meron na kayang root? Ay, wala pa, sige, tanim natin. It doesn't work like that. For the word to be implanted, for a seed to be implanted, it needs sunshine, water, and time. Okay, so I think that's, that's the value of the Word of God. When the Lord plants it in our hearts, it needs time to soak. You need to meditate on it. 
You need to pray it out. You need to think about it throughout the week. You need to allow your heart to really absorb that word. And I love that he included that attitude, that humbly accept the word. And medyo na convict ako dito, pero tayo tayo lang naman, so okay lang na, I can share. Um, when we talk about humbling, you know how sometimes, and guilty nga ako dito kasi I have favorite preachers and authors as well. So minsan yung e-enter ka, tas sinong mag-share ng word? Ah, okay, sige. So pwede ko pang i-update yung ano ko. <laughs> Yung vlog ko, ay, pwede akong gumawa ng ibang mga bagay. You know, we, we come in thinking na, ay, oo, oh, so-so nang okay naman siya, so-so naman. Sige, sige na lang, attend na lang tayo kasi, you know, we're a good Christian. We need to attend service. But no, it says here, are you willing to humbly accept the word that God plans to implant in your heart regardless of who will preach it? Regardless of who will go up that stage and share it, whether it's a little child, whether it's someone from uh, a different uh, congregation, a different location, do you come in every time you enter uh, into the time of receiving the word of God? Do you come in with a humble heart ready to accept, ready to listen, ready to say, Lord, you're going to speak to me. Regardless of circumstances, regardless of the preacher. Because we need to understand that what, like what James said, it's the word that will save us. It's not the preacher. It's not the messenger. It's the word that is implanted in our hearts. And you know, I was really convicted and I said, Sige Lord, next time, open na, ready na yung heart ko to accept whoever will preach the word. Because that's the exhortation. You listen, you repent, and you are ready. You have that posture of humility to say, Lord, I am willing to accept the word you give to me and soak on it and meditate on it and really just embrace it and think about it the whole week. Now we're going to go to the heart. To the heart of the why I chose this verse and why I chose this preaching today. For some of us, we stop there. Okay? For some of us, we stop with, ay, ayan na, na-journal ko na. Nasulat ko na yan sa notebook ko. Alam ko na, this is what the Lord is telling me. I will meditate. I will soak. I will worship. Thinking about, and that's great. You know, I will listen to the Lord. Ito yung sabi ni Lord. Mag-repent. Ito, nag na ako. Babaguhin ko na to, Lord. Ganyan. Tapos, yun na. It ends there. I have a friend who just posted a couple of weeks ago. Sabi niya, ipagtatapong ko na itong mga journals ko. Parang, ha, huh, why? It's like, I realize it's been 10 years. And I've never went back to any one of them. It's just there. It's gathering dust. It's gathering space. I never really went back to it and said, Ay, check, nagawa ko to. Check, nagawa ko to. Check, nagawa I'm, From now on, I'm just gonna obey the word as it comes. Like what our song kanina, no? We won't delay, Lord. I will obey. Ngayon na, as you said it. And that's what James was saying. He was saying, don't just merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves. Okay? Don't, you're cheating yourself. It's self-deception to think that Merely listening to the word, meditating on it, and soaking on it is good enough. He said, do what it says. Type nyo dyan, do what it says. Ramdam nyo ba yung gigil ko? <laughs> nakaka, nakaka, oh my Lord, you know. He went on to, to say that anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. Ang aga kong gumising today, pinantay ko yung kilay ko. Asin, ayan, ayan yung mirror eh. O, talagang nakat- nakatitig ako sa mirror, inaayos ko yung kilay ko, pinapantay ko. You see, a mirror gives you a reflection of how you look like. And if at any point, nakita kong hindi pantay yung kilay ko, I said, ah, hindi pantay. I'm ready to preach. Diba? It's, that's not how it works. What, what is the point 
of looking in the mirror if you're not gonna do anything about the wrong that you see in your faith. Now, the Bible, the Word of God, is exactly the same thing. But it re doesn't reflect your physical appearance, but it re it's a reflection of your soul. It's a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of who God wants you to be. And so we spend time in the morning, 10, 30 minutes, worshiping, reading the word, you know, thinking about it. And then the moment we step out of the room, we completely forget. Ano nga yung quiet time ko this morning? Try nyo at the end of the day. Ano na nga sinabi sa akin ni Lord this morning? We go in, do it as a duty, but we forget that it's pointless. Pointless to look at that word and walk away forgetting everything that God was asking us. A 19th century poet, Philip Bailey, said, The first and worst of all frauds is to cheat oneself. And all sin is easy na after that. What a powerful reminder, di ba? Cheating yourself. Believing that... Um, Believing that maybe if I attend a Bible study every day or I memorize all these verses, memorize the book of the Bible, go to a Bible school, uh, listen to 1,000 of the best preaching in the world. If I do that, then I am a follower of Christ. I am doing okay. I am great. That is deceiving yourself. Why? Because you need to look at how much of it have you done. Sa lahat ng mga Bible study na inattendan mo at sa lahat ng mga binasang verses na memorize natin, ilan doon, ilang percent ang masasabi mong ina-apply ko sa buhay ko. That I am doing. That I am trying my best. And look, the goal here. And you will see this in the entire book of James. It's not perfection. He's not expecting us to be perfect. But the progression, the growing in obedience, the growing in doing the things that the Lord has called us to do. You know, um, the goal is really, I mentioned this kanina, no? It's really Christ-likeness. How much of Christ is seen in the way you live your life? The way you treat your wife, the way you raise your children, the way you honor your parents, the way you do business. Is there integrity there? See, wholeness actually comes from that word one, being one. So your integrity is there's alignment in the things that you say, the things that you believe, the things that you value. It is aligned with how you live, how you speak. That's integrity. Walang disconnect. Walang brokenness. Walang magkaiba ka dito, magkaiba ka dito. Okay? That's the thing that weighs down our soul when we are not aligned. When there's no wholeness in our being, in our soul. See, Jesus Christ is the perfect example of obedience. He lived an obedient life. Three years, mga kapatid. Three years of ministry. That's all he had. Three years of ministry, he listened to God constantly, going to God, asking the Lord for direction. And he was so sold out to the mission of reconciliation and the mission of saving mankind that he did something about it. He did not hesitate. He did not hold back. In his three years of ministry, he preached the word, disciple, and raised world changers. He forgave sinners, healed the sick, loved the unlovable, raised the dead, died, resurrected, and went back to the Father. And guess what he said? In John 14, he said, whoever believes in me will do, will do the works that I have been doing. What was Jesus saying? Look, if you believe in me, it's not just enough that we stop there, but there's something to be done. You will do the works. There's a mission that I am calling you into. Together with the relationship comes the mission of God in our lives. 
works that I, and they will do. Ito yun eh. And they will do greater things than this, sabi ni Jesus. Because I'm going to the Father. Time's up na ako, guys eh. Three years lang. Tuloy nyo na to. You guys will do greater things than me. You will do what I do, and you will do greater things than this. Are we doing greater things? Are we doing better? Wag na greater things, okay? But are we doing better? Are we making progress in following Jesus? Or are we still struggling with the sin that we've been struggling with 5, 10, 15 years ago? 15 years na yung nakalipas. Friend, yan pa rin yung struggle mo. Okay? Progress naman tayo. What is the Lord telling you? Don't delay. Go. Do it. You know, a famous minister and evangelist, si Oswald Chambers, said, a single revealed fact, which means the truth of the Word of God, what the Lord is saying to you, cherished in the heart, meditate, soak, contemplate on it, and acted upon, do it, is more vital to your growth than a head filled with lofty ideas about God. I love this. One step forward in obedience is worth years of study about it. One small step forward in the right direction, doing what the Lord has called you to do is worth so much more than 5, 7, 10, 15 years studying about the Word of God. I hope we're all stepping forward. I hope we're all growing and progressing in our obedience to the Word and to the Lord. And so James sums up this entire thing and says, so hey, if you take time to listen to God, if you're quick to repent, if you allow that word to be planted in your heart and you do what the Lord is asking you to do and you're, you're, not, for, you're not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word, he says in verse 25, whoever looks intently, I love this, this is it, this is the highlight of my preaching, the perfect law that gives pre freedom and continues in it. Okay? It's not a one-time walk. You continue walking in it. You grow in it. Not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. Then, they will be blessed in what they do. See, blessing comes not in the studying, not in the knowing. Blessing comes in the doing. The blessing comes, you know, and I look at, the look at our life, no? Kaming mag-asawa. Look at our lives and I realized that it was in those, in those times that it was so hard to obey God. It was difficult. We struggled with the word. We don't know if we have the strength to obey and do it. But because we trust God and the relationship that we have with Him, we did it anyway. I think that was the time when we really experienced the blessing, the growth in our character, knowing God in a different angle, experiencing God in a way that we've never experienced Him before. Parang si Peter, no? Kailangan mong mag-step out sa boat. Hindi pwedeng, I believe you, Lord. Alam ko, ikaw yan. Go! Hindi, lika, lapit ka dito. Ha, eh, kasi tubig eh. No, lapit ka dito. Ako bahala sa'yo. Would he have experienced the miracle of walking in the water if he stayed on the boat? No, he listened to God. He obeyed the voice of Jesus and he stepped out of that boat. And he did what no man can do until now. He walked on water. You know, we sang this a while ago. That God's heart for us never changes. It's still the same. Yes. Wag nyo na akong pakantahin, guys. Grabe kayo. Okay. Sasabihin ko na lang. Okay. God's heart for us never changes. And we'll see that. That 
Unlike my illustration before, hindi katulad dati na ang tingin ko sa word ni God is like a leash that is controlling me, na hindi ako free, na parang, bakit ba? Gusto ko dun eh. Yung freedom na gusto ko nandun. Bakit ba ako nandito? Ano ba tong lahat ng commands and laws na nandito sa Bible? But you see, you have to understand that even in the Old Testament, like in Genesis 2.19, when he gave an instruction to Adam, the very first command, it did not start with do not, ah. no, no, no. It started with you are free to eat from every tree in the garden. In Exodus, when he gave the commandments, the Ten Commandments to Moses and to the Israelites, how did he start? He said, look, I am the Lord who rescued you from the land of Egypt, from 400 years of slavery. I am he who sets you free. The perfect law that gives us freedom. If there's anything I want you to take home from today's service, it's this. There is freedom in obeying God's word. That's the freer state that we could be. The freedom to be what, you know, God is saying, I, I want you to be free to be who I have called you to be. I want you to be free to live the life and the purpose that I have prepared for you. I want you to be free to worship me, to partner with me. Together, we will do the mission and bring wholeness in this broken world. I want you to be free to enjoy the blessing that comes with obedience and that comes with trusting me. Whoever the sun sets free, is free indeed. See, it's for freedom. That has always been the heart of God. That we will be free to love Him. That we will choose to love Him. The freedom that the world has to offer, no matter how tempting it may look like, is really no freedom at all. If anything, any freedom apart from the presence of God ends up slaving us. We also become slaves of these passions and freedom that we pursue. You know, I'm gonna end uh, with a video of Pomsky, what wait muna. This video was taken two weeks ago, okay? in the park, and I am confident to say that she trusts us now, okay? That we were able to win her love and her affection. And I think we have convinced her that there's no better place to be than in our home. Kahit na maliit lang siya, this is home. Be with us, okay? And this video kind of uh, gives that picture. Can we... Super short lang to, saka wala namang audio. So go ahead and watch. Ayun. Ano, nakita nyo. Mamaya, pakita ko sa inyo. Okay. <laughs> so that video, if you see, wala nang leash, no? Si Pomsky. Now, she can actually walk side by side with us. But if you notice, every time she would twirl, she will look at me. I, I am on this side. Eh. So, naglalakad kami. So, sandin siya sa side. She would twirl and she would look at me. She would always refer. Ah, okay, where's, where's my mom? She? Ah, okay, she's there. Okay, I'm good. I can run. I can be free. It's okay. Mom, she? Okay, it's okay. Now, there's that freedom that comes uh, with, with her knowing that uh, they are good masters. See, I'm going to end with this quote by a Scottish theologian. He said that the first study, the first duty of every soul is to find not its freedom, but its master. Not freedom but a master. 
We spend our life chasing the freedom of living the life that we've always dreamed. Not understanding that what our soul really longs and yearns for is a master. A good, a kind, faithful master who we can look to, who we can listen to, who we can obey, who we can be confident na this master will provide for me. This master will take care of me. When I'm in the presence of my master, I am safe. And most importantly, I am home. I am home. And that's the freedom. That's the freedom that comes with obeying and following the word of God. My question is, is Jesus the master of your soul? Have you truly tasted and seen the goodness of God? Have you experienced the joy and freedom that you can only find in His presence and in the obedience of His Word? If yes, progress, not perfection. My prayer for you is you will cross over from seeing the command and the Word of God as a leash and cross over into seeing it as a delight, seeing it as a tree, seeing it as freedom to move and, and live as a follower of Jesus in these boundaries that he had set for my safety, for my joy, and for my purpose. Now, if your answer is no and you have not made Jesus the master of your soul and the master of your life, don't delay. Trust me, there's no freedom out there that can compare to the freedom that Jesus is offering you. Just go ahead and type connect on our comment section below. We will do our best to connect you with one of our leaders to really help you grow in your walk and in your obedience to God. Because, you know, this is not something you can really do alone. God has always established family in community. And I am grateful. I am grateful for my very first victory group leader for the leaders after her and the leaders who still mentors me today and teaches me how to obey the word of God to not stay in that area of your preaching your teaching about it but are you are you doing it to have people just check up on you and say mm, hindi to consistent sa tinuturo ni Jesus sa atin. Do you have those relationships? Now, let me just pray for you as we end today. Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you for that perfect law that gives us freedom. We thank you, Lord, that, um, that even as we surrender our hearts to you, as, as we make you Lord and Master over our lives, thank you, Lord, that you are a good and a faithful Master, Lord. You are a faithful Father. You are a faithful friend. That you've never changed, Lord. Your desire for what's best for us remains even until today. And Lord, we repent of the times that we delay our obedience to you. We repent of the times that we run away from you thinking that it's, we're so much better on the other side. When in fact, Lord, in your presence, there is fullness of joy, fullness of freedom. So Lord, we pray that you help us progress, help us grow, in our walk with you. Help us to always pause, to listen, to repent, to allow your word to be planted in our hearts. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for taking us in and making us part of your family. Lord, we are looking forward to being used by you, by being your hands and feet, Father. 
we just commit this time to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this Sunday. What a... Uh, Nakarried away ako, pero it was, such a, it was such a great day. Thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to really just uh, share the word with you today. We pray that you go forth and obey everything that you have heard. Uh, we miss you and we are going to see you guys really, really soon. Bye! So ito nga yung video.